In this series on simple linear regression, we're now going to talk about confidence intervals. We'll do some quick examples in R because the interpretations of confidence intervals can get a little tricky. I think it'll be helpful to start with a particular example, and then I'll come back to the whiteboard and write out general sentences, which I think would seem like too much if I gave them to you at first. But after seeing a particular example, I think will be particularly helpful. Oh, terrible puns and videos. <laughs> oh, that's the worst. OK, here we go. We're going to jump into R, and we're going to continue with this uh, example based on the Elmhurst College data set, where we are trying to predict gift aid based on family income. And what we've established so far is that as family income goes up, the amount of aid a family will receive uh, as a gift will go down. And in fact, based on fitting the model and then looking at the summary, we know how to interpret exactly how much gift aid will go down for every one unit increase in family income. And in fact, in the extreme, we even know how to interpret how much gift aid a family will receive when their income is zero dollars. What we're going to extend now is how to calculate confidence intervals for the intercept and the slope. And lucky for you all, we are working in R. So there's a function named conf for confidence, int for interval. It's all one word, which is a little sloppy in my opinion. But the ease of the function is too nice to ignore. So conf int on your fitted object will give you confidence intervals, one for the intercept and one for the slope. And I'm going to leave it to you to tell me what percent confidence these are by default. But remember, there's help files in R. And if you need to help yourself figure out what confidence level that is, the help file in R will do that for you. Let's get back to our plot, because that one looks better. So let's work on interpreting the intercept first. What we have to do here is blend together our standard interpretation of a confidence interval with our standard interpretation of an intercept. So we'll start. We are 90. Oh, I have to give you the percent confidence. We are 95% confident that when, now here comes the interpretation of a intercept, family income is $0 we expect gift aid to be, and now here we have to come back to an interpret, sorry about that, we have to come back to an interpretation for a confidence interval, to be between, we expect gift aid be, to be between 21.72 and 26.92 thousands of dollars. OK, we can clean that up, right? If we take 21, rounded to two decimal places, and multiply it by thousands of dollars, oh, right, we can just go 21, thousands of dollars, which means we can just go, oh, uh, you know what? There we go. That sentence makes a lot more sense to me. Here is the blending of a confidence interval interpretation with an intercept interpretation. We are 95% confident that when family income is equal to zero, we expect gift aid to be between $21,000 and $26,000. So somewhere in this range is what we think the mean gift aid will be when family income is equal to zero. OK, that wasn't terrible, was it? Let's try the slope. We'll do the same thing, blend together a confidence interval interpretation with a slope interpretation. We are 95% confident that when family income increases by $1,000, I'm just going to immediately jump into the units of family income. We expect 
gift aid to decrease. Notice they're both negative. By between 0 0.02, let's just help ourselves right off the bat. And I'm going to round to decrease by between $21 and just helping you out to remind you how to do this, $65. There is a proper interpretation for a 95% confidence interval for a slope. The slopes are certainly more tricky. We are 95% confident that when family income increases by just $1,000, we expect gift aid to decrease by between Twenty-one and sixty-five thousand dollars. There's some range of values we expect the gift aid to decrease by. Notice I paid particular attention throughout to my units and to whether or not my confidence interval increases or decreases. If you end up in a scenario using your own example where the confidence interval overlaps zero. That is, one end of the confidence interval is negative, and one end of the confidence interval is positive. I encourage you to say something like, we expect whatever to change by between negative some amount and positive some amount. So in fact, that's starting our way into more general sentences. Let's just do it. We just gave some quick examples in R. Now we're going to try some general sentences. We'll start with the intercept. We are P percent confident, for whichever percent confident you choose, that when X is equal to zero units, that is, when the explanatory variable is equal to zero units, um, We expect y to be between lower bound, whatever it is, and upper bound units. So you fill in lower bound and upper bound based on the data you have, based on the confidence intervals you asked R to calculate for you. So here is my general sentence for an interpretation of an intercept's confidence interval. We are P percent confident that when X is equal to zero units, we expect Y to be between some two numbers, remembering the units. Okay, let's try the slope next. I'm just going to erase this one so we have more room. slope as a general sentence for you to like fill in the blanks relative to the context of your data set in the future. We start it the same. We are 95% confident that when x increases by one unit, we expect y to change by lower bound to upper bound. So I tried to write the general sentence even more generally so that you could say if lower bound and upper bound are both negative or both positive, change is appropriate. But really, you could be more specific in your examples, like we were for the Elmhurst College data set, where the slope's confidence interval had both negative lower and upper bound terms. 
So hopefully this was a quick video on helping you through confidence intervals for simple linear regression. Calculating them in R turns out to be really easy. Interpreting them turns out to be slightly more difficult. So I highly encourage you to include an example in your course notes where you interpret a confidence interval for both an intercept and a slope. And then if you're particularly uneasy about those, hop online and ask me to help you through your interpretations.